Here's one of the flop phone industry's biggest dilemmas. How can we fit a big screen inside a phone that is not so big? Display innovations in recent years have reduced bezel sizes over the years, and now we even have foldables, which once the issues of price and durability are resolved, promise to fix the dilemma once and for all. But 10 years ago, some wacky engineers at Samsung clearly think to different. They took outside of the box and shoved in the Pico projector inside a phone and called it the Galaxy Bean. Oh. Around 2009, Various companies such as 3M they give the Pico projector slow enough to fit into the palm of your hand thanks to the usage of smaller LED bulbs for the projector. And it was only natural for phones, having already assumed the capabilities of compact cameras and MP3 players to add your size on these projectors. Right? In fact, no sooner than these Pico projectors started to appear, the cell phone manufacturers start shoving them into your own phones. For instance, you had the LG X4 and Fujitsu's F-U4B, but they acted more like modular attachments, similar to the early camera add-ons of the early 2000s. As such, the Galaxy Beam was one of the very few to integrate a projector inside the phone proper, and it was also the most famous attempt as well. And, oh, despite the name, this was Samsung's second attempt at the Android smartphone where he integrated the projector. Uh, you ignore the smartphone part. Okay, enough with the context. Let's discuss the style of the show. Oh. Fundamentally, the Galaxy B is a Galaxy S advanced with an integrated projector and showing the AMOLED screen for standard LCD, which to me is pretty decent nonetheless. In other words, you got a 4 inch WVGA display, dual core Lobapo SOC. 768MB of RAM, 8GB of internal storage, and a 5MP rear camera with HD video recording. And in the hand, it isn't as bulky as integrating a projector would suggest. Compared to the base Galaxy S Advance, it is only 25 grams heavier at 125 grams. In comparison to the contemporary flagship Galaxy S3, the S3 itself was only 12 grams lighter at 133 grams. It might seem that the Galaxy Beam is quite thick at 12.5 mm. But fortunately, the factor curved back cover makes it feel much more comfortable in the hand. It also fits a 2000 mAh battery, which is about 25% larger than most comparably sized phones. I can guarantee that this phone will definitely not fail Jerry Wick's everything's band pass. Also, an interesting quote about this phone is that the SIM card lock and 3.5mm headphone jack are located on the sides of the phone, which actually makes it one of the few phone people hot for the whole SIM card lock. What's more, the yellow 5 frame even extends right into the back once the back cover is removed. Unfortunately, this black and yellow combo is the only one that you'll ever get, even that the target audience would like any businessman needing to make on-the-go presentations. I'm quite puzzled as to why a more conservative cover option wasn't even offered for the Galaxy Bean. With that, let's take a look at the projected hardware. Oh. Hardware-wise, the projector isn't very much to talk about. It is a DLB pipe projector made by Texas Instruments. They only had the resolution of 640p times 360 pixels and the maximum brightness of 15 lumens. That resolution was equivalent to that of most Nokia Symbian touchscreen phones, which never exceeded 4 inches in size. You might conclude that blowing up a screen resolution meant for smartphones, 10 times the size, sounds like the recipe for disaster. Right. Not quite. Assuming a room is not enough, the B produces pictures of satisfactory color and sharpness most of the time. Good enough for office presentations even. But, Things obviously do fall apart under bright conditions. But surprisingly, if a date stock battery installed, the bean did battery less quickly than I would have expected. Nonetheless, it did get quite hot under prolonged usage. Alright, now I'll start to discuss some of the hardware flaws of the Galaxy Bean itself. The sticker placement on the back is unfortunately far from ideal when projecting, 
Unless you have been any kidnapped fight about the place, the pin, which nobody has time for that, you are going to king inevitably place it flat on the table with Hojak Bing, which will always make to muffled sounds from the speaker itself. And also wish that the bean itself will have an easy input to connect to other devices such as net pops. You have kept the device relevant, even as the phone component itself will become obsolete over time, especially that given that these integrated projectors are rated at usually about 20,000 hours over two years of non-stop usage. Oh. Now that I've covered the hardware, let's discuss the software. It's basically n for gingerbread with past release 4.0, like the Galaxy F2, but with additional software to fully exploit the projector. On the right, there is a dedicated projector key that will not press, activates the projector. A short press when the projector is on opens a quick menu for basic tools. Of course, the most basic thing you can do is to just mirror the full screen straight onto the projector, but set some big thing ahead and create a dedicated projector just for the beam itself. First thing first, you can manually adjust the focus and orientation of the projector. Next, you can launch the quick pad, which acts as an overlay on top of white spirity on the screen. You can do things such as pointers and scribbles, similar to what LG did for its contemporary quick memo application. This is most useful when giving office presentations, but as you will see later, software of partners might make it useful enough. Visual Presenter activates both the projector and camera to plug the beam into an overhead projector and can even capture photos right from this application itself. But keep it that you actually need a dedicated stand for it to work properly. I would rather have preferred to have taken photos of the documents before projecting them, making this app's inclusion quite pointless in my opinion. Ambient mode sounds quite confusing, but what it basically does is to allow you to project your very own photos and videos and send them to background music. The postmark is really self-explanatory. You can use the projector as a torch instead of the usual camera flash. You can adjust its brightness, color, and the blinking intensity. Repeat mode is essentially an alarm clock that activates the projector together with the alarm, showing information such as weather, calendar appointments, and news. Just make sure to place the beam at the spot where the projection can be seen as soon as you wake up. Alright, in summary, the software functions are good, but not great however. The first problem is that there is no option to do keystone correction. The second and more pressing issue is that it feels very awkward to control the phone while the projector is on. When projecting in landscape, the phone's orientation is also in landscape. In other words, you control the projector in image in landscape mode or viewing the phone in portrait mode unless you are willing to already seek a pentacular to the projector lens. And not all parts of the phone software work in landscape mode, for example the home screen. This means that if you want to return the projector to landscape mode, it requires you to tilt the phone back and forth. It seems like a small thing, but it makes this projector experience far from seamless. I know that in reading the settings itself, you can force send the projector to always project itself in landscape only. But unfortunately, this doesn't fully compensate for the awkwardness in controlling the phone itself. So as you can probably tell, the idea of an integrated projector is nice, but only if you leave it hands-free. Otherwise, it becomes very awkward to control the projector as when needed, especially in two of the most obvious use cases, gaming and office presentations. And the obviously explains why projectors in phones never really caught on. Nonetheless, not every brand was deterred from trying again. Samsung will eventually release another Galaxy Beam device, Confusingly named the Beam 2, if upgraded the projector to a 20 lumens WVGA1, or having specs in line with a 2014 Mid Ranger. But it was only exclusive to China Mobile, never exiting China. Motorola also put a set with a projector accessory for their Moto Z in 2016. From the looks of it, it seems clear that Moto clearly noted the flaws on the Galaxy Beam. 
The most obvious being that the projector is mounted on the right side. When in use, the projector image and phone will both be elastic by default. And there is even a kick set to adjust the angle of the projection tool. But other than a few obscure Chinese friends seeking their 15 minutes of fame, the projector in the phone concept is basically extinct today. It's not just a problem of physics and the desire to keep smartphones as thin as possible. I would like to think that the prevalence of smart screens basically made the concept of projectors inside phones obsolete. By now, most bandings wear a projector will be handy to already have a smart screen, such as a flat screen television capable of supporting wireless smartphone mirroring. Never mind that there will be potential latency introduced in the process, but for most smartphone users, it is clearly much more flexible and appealing, especially when it comes to controlling the phone itself. And that's the story of the connective beam and the concept of projectors in phones. Cool in theory, much less so in practice. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps fix the algorithm and we must more attention to my videos. If you enjoyed watching this video, a donation to my Kofi will be very much appreciated too. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.